The LM7 hit the market back in 1999 and came with trucks such as the 1999 and 2007 Silverado 1500, the 1999 and 2006 Suburban, the 02-05 Cadillac Escalade, and others. Although it started its life as a truck engine, you've got just as much chance of spotting one of these 5.3 liter iron blocks under the hood of a turbocharged drag car. And with good reason. With iron block strength, it's a great choice for boosted or nitrous applications. And although it's heavier than, say, an aluminum LS1 block, it's still lighter than the old Gen 1 and Gen 2 engines. Plus, it's much easier to find one in good shape, and the heads actually flow similarly to LS6 heads. But before we get too crazy with the potential, let's look at our basic bolt-on options to start. Like many builds, people often start with cold air intakes and aftermarket exhaust systems. Like its Gen 3 brethren, the LM7 also comes with a mechanical fan that saps horsepower. For that reason, an electric fan kit is an excellent upgrade. We also recommend a good programmer with an equally good chassis dyno tuner to help the programmer dial in everything just right. A quarter thermostat will also open up the tuning window. The shift points can be raised, which also makes it easier to tune for a bigger cam and injectors later on. And speaking of bigger cams, if you do only one upgrade to this engine, it has to be a cam swap. That's because the LM7 came with a tiny 191 duration at 50 inch lift camshaft. Now you could go with an LS3 or LS9 cam, but that won't put the power where you want it, especially for truck applications. In that case, we'd recommend a dedicated truck cam. Otherwise, if your LM7 is destined for a lighter car with gear and converter, you can be much more aggressive. And if you have a power adder, you can find cams made just for blowers, turbos, and nitrous too. Supercharger and nitrous cams offer slightly more lobe separation and longer exhaust duration, while turbo cams reduce overlap with less exhaust duration in relation to the intake. We've seen drop-in 500-inch lift cams become popular, but LS6 springs will allow you to run higher 550-inch lift cams to actually extend out the RPM range. You can go beyond those numbers too, but you'll want to run dual valve springs at that point. When swapping the cam, you'll also need to consider an LS2 timing chain, LS7 spec lifters, LS2 timing chain damper and adapter, and 80 thousandths inch wall push rods. A trunnion kit will also add reliability. Now for the big guns, power adders. But before you get too far, you'll want to consider a four corner steam kit to reduce hot spots that cause the piston rings to butt and snap the piston's ring lands. Bear in mind, you'll probably need to upgrade the stock injector and fuel pump as well. We'll get into that later. First, let's look at your supercharger options. A root style supercharger is great for torque in the low and mid RPM range, while a centrifugal style supercharger is lightweight and makes more power at high RPM. A nitrous oxide kit at low settings is great for street driving with stock internals. Up to a 200 shot is common. Keep in mind the tight piston ring gap is a limiting factor beyond that. One other thing to keep in mind with nitrous, a single plane intake is less prone to break from nitrous backfire. As far as nitrous choices, a plate system has better distribution than the original intake, but an eight nozzle fogger system is even better. Running higher octane fuel is advised. Single turbo systems with turbo exhaust manifolds are an inexpensive way to make big power. If you're running a single turbo, the T4 hot side fits well, but the small turbine diameters limit exhaust flow. V-band style exhaust housings open up the turbine options and make plumbing easier. Although a twin turbo setup is a little more expensive out of the box, you'll have more room to grow. Fuel system upgrades and tuning can also unlock more power, especially when you're going beyond the simple bolt-ons. The factory injectors are only rated at 22 to 25 pounds and won't support much more than 380 horsepower. If you plan on upgrading to larger fuel injectors to meet the fuel demands of increased power, custom tuning will be required to properly adjust the fuel and ignition timing. Stock LM7 truck manifolds have 1.9 inch injectors versus the longer Gen 3 LS car injectors and shorter Gen 4 injectors. The factory pump is good to about 430 horsepower. Drop-in fuel pump modules and external pumps are popular. Other options to maintain or increase pump pressure include electronic voltage controllers and hot wire kits. Now let's take a look at options for aftermarket intakes and throttle bodies. If you've added the power adder, the intake and throttle body can wait. However, if you're staying naturally aspirated, an aftermarket intake and throttle body is commonly done before the heads. The factory truck style manifold has long runners for better low end torque. Porting an intake is one option and a good value. If you're looking to add more power and torque, the Trailblazer SS once again is a step up and larger 90 millimeter four bolt throttle body can be fitted. 
The fast LSX RT intake allows a bigger 102 millimeter plus throttle body. Ask your tuner about going with a speed density tune. Doing so removes the MAF restriction or will give you a bit more power. Once you've upgraded the intake and throttle body, you can begin to think about the heads. You've got a few options here. The stock heads can be CNC porter for more airflow and milled up to 30 thousandths inches for more compression. Flow numbers can be as high as 325 CFM at 600 inches of lift. Lightweight hollow stem LS3 valves can be cut to two inches to fit the seats. Between the light valves and better springs, the engines will pull clearly to 7,000 RPM. Now a better option is aftermarket cathedral port heads. In this design, the valve angles are typically laid over to 13.5 degrees and 2.1 inch intake valves are common. They flow great and the cross sections are great for boost. With a medium sized cam, 400 plus horsepower naturally aspirated is common. Still looking for more? Then look closely at your rotating assembly. A set of forged pistons should be high on your priority list since the stock pistons are a known weak point. Forged pistons will have stronger wrist pins, thicker ring lands, and the added valve reliefs allow you to run big cams. There are exceptions, but Gen 3 rods don't care for much more than 750 horsepower or 7,000 RPM. If you're getting forged pistons, it's best to also get the forged connecting rods with 716 rod bolts. The LM7 cranks were cast but strong. They've been proven to handle over 1,000 horsepower. The main reason to upgrade to a stroker forge crank is for the added cubic inches. Performance rotating assemblies are available in many combinations, but it's best to confirm exact deck height before ordering. Finally, how about the block itself? These 5.3 liter iron blocks can be bored to match the LS1 size. If you're planning to run booster nitrous, most people will just hone the blocks to 3.8 inches or up depending on piston and ring availability. LM7 blocks have been known to withstand 1300 horsepower with proper machining, racing fuel, and an excellent tune. Although the head and the main studs are advised if you're making more than 850 horsepower. The factory main caps aren't out. It's better to reduce ignition time and compensate with added boost to reduce the cylinder pressure spikes that lift heads and cause the main caps to dance. And that's the blueprint for LM7 High Performance. Good luck and happy swapping.